Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. The jury has been chosen in Donald Trump's New York election interference case. Twelve jurors, one alternate, are now seated and ready to decide if Donald Trump is guilty. Tomorrow, Judge Juan Mershon expects to finish selecting alternates. Five more of those are needed ahead of opening statements, which could come as soon as Monday. Now, none of this looks certain this morning when the third day of jury selection began with something of a setback. As of Tuesday evening, when the trial left off, seven jurors had been sworn in. But by lunchtime today, two of those seven were dismissed. One of the dismissed jurors, originally seated as juror number four, turned out not to have been entirely truthful in his answers on the jury questionnaire, specifically about whether he has ever been accused or convicted of committing a crime. The DA's office actually discovered that someone with the same name as that juror was arrested in the 1990s for tearing down political advertisements. His wife was also involved in a corruption inquiry and entered into a deferred prosecution agreement with the Manhattan DA's office. After some further questioning, the juror was dismissed from the case. That seems, at least from where we sit, like a sensible decision. The second dismissal of a juror today was really troubling. And despite a barrage of media coverage, you may have already seen this today, I actually think the facts of this matter have not quite sunk in. What actually happened is that this juror became the target of the Trump, MAGA, and Fox intimidation machine because they suspected she would not vote to acquit the former president. And their targeting appears to have successfully led to her departure from the jury. Now, I'm not going to repeat much of this juror's identifying information, We've referred to her only by her profession. She is a nurse. But because of the extensive questioning of the potential jurors, the public nature of the court proceedings, and the wealth of personal information available on the Internet, it hasn't been that hard to identify these people. In fact, this issue was brought up in court today. Judge Mershon directed the press to avoid physical descriptions of potential jurors and ruled that information about their employers will be redacted from court transcripts. But one person took it to an entirely new and irresponsible level. Both Tuesday and Wednesday nights, devoting entire segments to airing all the available information about the jurors and his opinion on whether they are suspect. And of course, the only acceptable jurors are ones sympathetic to Donald Trump. Jurors who don't believe no one's above the law. So then, the defendant himself went on to actually amplify Fox's coverage, posting a quote about undercover liberal activists lying to the judge to get on the jury. There's no evidence that's true. The post appears to be a flagrant violation of Trump's gag order, which prohibits him from commenting on jurors. And so this morning, Judge Mershon told the court that the original juror number two, the one that scares Mr. Waters, called and conveyed that she had concerns about her identity becoming public, said that friends and family have already inquired about whether she is a juror. The juror added that given these outside influences, she was concerned about her ability to be fair and impartial. Understandably, after all that information and those opinions about her got out into the world, she found herself feeling scared, targeted, and exposed. Judge Mershan agreed to excuse juror number two from duty. Again, there's no doubt about what happened here. <laughs> This is part of a long, consistent, and persistent pattern in which Donald Trump encourages and the MAGA world pursues the harassment, intimidation of people who cross the former president. It has happened a ton. It's happened to several key figures in his legal cases. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg has received all sorts of death threats, as has Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and Judge Arthur Ngoron. Remember the bomb threat called into his house who overthrew this, oversaw the civil fraud case in New York? It's the same thing we saw happen to Georgia election workers, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, were dragged through the mud and were harassed to the point that Freeman had to flee her home because of false claims they were involved in election fraud. It is what happened to Republican Rusty Bowers, the Speaker of Arizona's House of Representatives, who was terrorized in his own neighborhood after refusing to help Trump overturn the 2020 election results. Now that is exactly what is happening amid an attempt to administer orderly justice in a New York courtroom. It is pure thuggery, plain and simple. It's a violation of the gag order on its face, and it's a scandal. I, I don't think it was quite treated as such today in the way it should be. This trial is going to be a test of whether the system can stand up to the constant bullying intimidation that is the stock and trade of the MAGA movement. 
Now, Fox won't face any repercussions for this bullying intimidation, and they shouldn't. It's a free country. It's covered by the First Amendment. But inside that courtroom, there have to be repercussions. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.